So welcome to Senpai Land here, Opa. Yes, and fun man. Hi. So thank you for joining us on this uh, Chinese New Year's Eve, right? You should be having uh, some gathering at your family or relative's place. Up to eight people. <laughs> <laughs> and with the face mask on. Yep. Right. Okay. So you feel lucky today, Opa. No. Why? Come on, the new year, right? Twenty twenty one here. Yeah. It's gonna be very auspicious year ahead. Auspicious. Auspicious. Well, speaking of which, right? Uh, we had soon few questions asked on Discord. So for the audience who's tuning in on Discord here, regarding this tutorial, you can just uh, type in the chat signal. Is at the back end here, monitoring it, and then we give you uh some what air time to speak on Discord. Yeah. Right. And shall we flash the channel for them? All right, sure. This is the Discord server. So if you haven't joined it yet, you will scan this QR code and you'll be there. I just realized that they, oh, no. they might not able to. <laughs> you see me? <laughs> this is the camera that they are watching. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know where they can go in, okay? But by now you should have uh, joined the server. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm sure it will be fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. All good online. People saying hi. So if you are there, right, just tell us like, how you feeling right now here. Do you have your orange review here, so we can do some activity together. All right. Okay. Next. Let's go. Okay. okay good. So without further ado, let's go through this the week's tutorial questions here. We go one at a time here. Mm -hmm. So question one. Uh, Opa, we have something called the succeeding anhydride. You know, uh, talking about it will form this uh this cyclic in in light um when heated in these conditions. Yeah. It will become that chemical with the release of water and HCl. Mm -hmm. So the question asked about a mechanism, right? And as usual, C1121 is all about the mechanism. Yeah. Well, one thing I remember you asking me was, do we need to remember what is any anhydride and have specific name? And my answer is always that, no, you don't have to memorize. Mm -hmm. Right. But you should know like, what does an anhydride you know, functional group mean? Yeah. Can so you share a bit more? So the anhydride functional group is like so you know you have your double O yeah and so an anhydride is when you have a C double O O and then another C double O like this that's right so it's about really this region here right this I see O B O C O in a this part is symmetrical okay and it behaves something similar to a uh, acid chloride in terms of uh, the reactivity mm -hmm. yeah so okay and this is your Succinamide. Once again, knowing you know what is succinamide in the CM1 to 1 syllabus. But a question for you, Opa, yeah. since you represent the student as well. Right, just recap the memory here. What could be the driving force for this reaction here? Left to right. Left to right? Yeah. What is the driving force for this reaction to go? Mm, so what's the driving force for this reaction? Mm. So maybe um I think that okay, so I see there's one molecule on the left and there's three molecules on the right, right? Okay. So I think that you no, know, this is this is um well I can't remember the word. Entropy. Yes. Entropy driven because you have more particles on the right side in the product, right? It becomes more disordered. Yep. So the amount of randomness increased after the reaction. Mm -hmm. But some people are thinking, oh yeah, that's right here, because I see one mole and I see three moles of substances, right? Yep. But the question for you is is this equation balanced? Hmm. <laughs> That's something you must check, okay? Don't be put by just the face value of the question people, okay? okay. Always balance it first. Because on the left hand side of this arrow, I do not see a nitrogen. But on the right, I see nitrogen and I see chlorine. Ah, yes. Ah. Oh, there's an NH4Cl over there. That's right. So to really balance the equation, right, you're going to put these together here. And then you notice how many moles of substances we have to react inside. So there's two on the reactant side and three at the product side. Five those. Okay, it's very good here. So you see that when we have two on the left and three on the right here, and some more in 200 degrees Celsius, these two particles, water and HCl, exist as a gas. Yeah, gaseous state. So two Gs here on the left, nothing is in gaseous state because your ammonium chloride is it? Is in Liquid? Mm, what kind of what kind of bonding is this? Oh, it's a it's a ionic. Ionic. Oh. So ionic. it's solid. Very good. It's salt here, right? Ionic bond, so it should be solid. Okay. Good. Good. Wonderful. Okay. okay. So this very important is entropy, and that's why we need a high temperature because if you may write for the here, 
the Gibbs free energy equation. Can we put up the slides? All right. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that's Ding Nan's job, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, come. So, what is the Gibbs free energy? So, the Gibbs free energy is the um, it's a change in the free energy of the system, right? Yeah, yeah, delta G, right? Yeah. So we have delta G. Delta G equals to H. Yeah. And delta H ah. minus P delta S. And right. And S stands for entropy. Mm -hmm. Delta is the triangle which represents change. Yeah. How do we define change in science now? So the change in the, so we define change as the difference between the final state and the initial state. Very good, very good. So final final minus initial. Good. So because we know that entropy has increased, mm -hmm. so the delta S is well positive. Positive. So let's put the plus here. Put the bracket plus. All right. Yeah. And we know that the Gibbs free energy, right? We like it to be negative for any reaction to be spontaneous. Spontaneous. That means it will happen naturally. So we want this to be negative. Correct. So the negative. Yes. Which means that if you have a very high temperature, mm -hmm. then this term here will be. Very positive. Very positive, but we have a negation in front. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes very negative. Which makes the allergy even more negative. Which is very good. <laughs> yep. Okay, very good, very good. Okay. So now let's come back to more organic chemistry in the mechanism. Yeah? Shall right. we continue? So, Signal. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so let's put on the screen. Yeah. And then we continue. Alright, let's move on. Okay. So we have the energy over there. Yep. And then and so the first thing is that, you know, because NH4 CL are uh, any compound, right? Mm. So we take a look at the NH4 plus. That's right. So if I may just come in a little bit here for mechanism here in CL moment two one. Before you start, always identify whether you are having a acidic medium or basic medium. Mm -hmm. Because in an acid catalyzed reaction or in the whole ecosystem you have more H plus here, in your uh, mechanism you cannot have minus charge existing. Yep. So, you look at the question just now, we didn't see any H class, we didn't see any base or acid terms, right? Mm -hmm. Then someone asked, how do I know whether it's acidic or basic catalyst? Well, so, we think about it, yeah, right? So, just now, if we, just now if we look back, uh -huh. we have the NH4 here over here, right? Yeah. And so, there's an NH4 plus and CL minus. That's right. Right, and so, you know, just imagine that, you know, you have water, and the NH4 plus will dissociate into NH3 and H plus. So, yeah, I mean, this doesn't really happen, but just, let's just imagine. Yeah. So, now the NH4 plus is an acid. Yes, it's acidic, okay? So, this is the NH4 plus is acidic, or how I like to put it is, right? So, now if you can translate that in the chat here, uh, ammonium chloride came from which acid? Well, HCl? Good, a strong acid. And which base? NH3. A weak base. Mm -hmm. So overall, it will lean towards the, the acid side. Exactly. So the salt is acidic, which means the whole reaction is in an acidic medium. Let's move on. All okay. Right. And then after checking that, right, and if you have a carbonyl group in an acidic medium, the first step is to is to protonate the carbonyl. Always do that. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. So after this, well, we get this. Yep. And then so now we have the NH3, right? Why do we want this ammonia to attack this carbon? Well, because, because we look at the final product. Very good. The final product here, everybody, folks, you always, in somewhere in the back of your mind, when you draw a mechanism, right, you have to see, hey, what has changed, Opa? The, the thing in the middle over here. Yeah, right. So we have a replacement of the oxygen by NH. Mm -hmm. And the only source of nitrogen we see in the equation was, it came from? The NH4 plus. Exactly. Exactly. So this is how we know that somehow this N must go in here and then replaces the O. Yep. Good job. So we form the C N bond. Yeah. And we get the oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. And we get the tetrahedral structure. Very good. Okay. And we know that uh, we want to keep the N. Mm -hmm. So that means we need to eject something else. Yeah. Let's push on. Alright. So we keep the N. So what we do now is we do a photon transfer to the oxygen. Right. So why do we do that, Opa? Why do we need to put the H, you know, H plus on this O? Because, well, we look at the final product again, right? And then so, what we have is the CN bond, yeah. but we don't want the CO bond. Very good. So, the idea is, right, if I want to remove the O, any O in any chemicals, right? Mm -hmm. We want to remove it in the end, we protonate it. Make it the O plus with the H. Yes. That's the trick. Okay, good. 
Alright, so the next step, what we have is we pick up the oxygen in the middle, very good here, and then if we remember right, in the previous few classes, we talked about this uh, Dominic effect, right, that your arrows is pushing it, like a door slamming. Ah, uh, yes. You see a pattern from the beginning? Mm, yeah, I can see one. It's always, I mean, in a pair, right? Just like what? Just like. Just like. Just like. Ang Pao. See, time series coming here, right? Oh. You celebrate? Uh, not really, but yeah, now I do. Okay, except <laughs> there's no money, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to show a demonstration there. Okay, two things come in a pair. Good. So, two arrows. No arrow here, two arrows. Okay, let's push on. Push All on right. the arrow. So after this, you get this after following the arrow. Yeah. So from this, hmm. it's good, right? Because now we open the ring. Mm -hmm. So now from this, what I do is I do a photon transfer from the OH plus here mm -hmm. to the OH plus over here. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. So now the coupler is automated, right? Yeah. So now the nitrogen can attack. Very good. You see, because in the end, on this end to be the bridge, right, for the two carbonyl groups here. So we free up this lone pair, we push to the other carbon, and the reason for us to protonate so is to make this carbon more, more electrophilic. Exactly. Let's do this. Come. All right. So we attack the pair, and then we get this another tetrahedral structure. Very good. And please tell our friends from the class, right? What is this function group? So this is called. I think it's called the. Geminal diol. Geminal diol, right? So if you diol means two alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. But since they both branch from the same carbon here, it's like a Gemini. 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 Oh. What okay. is a zodiac? I have no idea. Uh, I'm a Taurus. Oh, okay. It just happened that this is the year of the office. Oh. Do you believe in zodiac? No. <laughs> so, features and characteristics of an ox or Taurus mm -hmm. is uh, hardworking. Oh. Hardworking. Okay. You know, loyal, yeah. But I'm strong at this as well. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay. So let's push on. Okay. Yeah. Let's get this one. Yeah. So, what we did here was we did another proton transfer. Proton transfer, you see that, right? What happened was, right, we didn't uh, let this H go out, but then, you know, we just pushed on, but realized that there's an N plus here. Mm. We do not want an N plus because with the N here, the N H. Yeah, so we do internal proton transfer, and one might ask for OPA, does it matter whether it's this hydroxy group or the other hydroxy group? Well, I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter. It's the same, right? It doesn't matter. It only matters if and only if, when Dr. Lam, your lecturer, want to play a trick. They label this as oxygen 16, oxygen 18, when there's some kind of autotomic labeling. I think oh, you're the right one, okay? Okay. okay. Be careful. Okay. Alright, so mm. on this now we have OH2 plus. OH2 right? plus, recognize this. Yeah. And yes. so we can kick it on as C2. Very good, eject the water. A pair of arrows. And what's next? And we get almost the final product. Almost there. What's next? Yeah. Aha, okay. Take away the water. And you see, it looks so much alike. Yeah. One final step. No, we just need to take away the proton over here. Very good. And we get this. Wonderful. This is perfect, Opa. Come on, Mita. I just don't welcome it, Korean. <laughs> I would say thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>